We've been reporting President Trump's tweet comparing the impeachment inquiry to a lynching is drawing reaction from both sides of the aisle. While Republicans have had a mixed response, Democrats have condemned it. How dare he? And yet again, it is an example of Donald Trump having no appreciation for the history of this nation. To compare the constitutional process to something like lynching is far beneath the office of the president of the United States. The president should not compare a constitutionally mandated impeachment inquiry to such a dangerous and dark chapter of American history. It's irresponsible for him to do so, and I hope that he will apologize. Let's bring in Antoine Seawright and Joseph Pinion. Antoine is a CBSN political contributor, senior advisor to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, and CEO of Blueprint Strategy. He's in Washington. And Joseph is a Republican strategist. He's with me here in New York. Thanks to both of you for being with us. Uh, Joseph, let me start with you. We heard some reaction at the top of the show from Republican lawmakers on this topic. What do you think it is that the party needs to do to respond? Look, I think many in the party, including Senator Tim Scott, have other that they would have preferred the president not use these words. I think, look, it's, it's I think, the kind of the most cynical thing to think that the president is at once blind to the layers of history and the, the heft that some of these words carry, and at the same time using them maliciously. So I think, again, I, we, we must recognize as a party, um, this is not the language that would be acceptable, but at the same time understanding that individuals who would try to use this uh, and compare it to something like Charlotte's as, as Congressman Green did from, from Texas, you know, where you have Heather Heyer who died, where you have people literally marched in the streets saying blood and soil. Um, you know, that type of comparison is not helpful and also makes it more difficult for us to have the very serious conversation about racial inequality here in America. But, but Joseph, what did you think when you saw that tweet from the president today? I mean, I, I just thought, you know, here we go again, just an individual who has demonstrated, I think, uh, across the board that he is very, in many ways, blind to some of these scars and the vestiges uh, of racial racism here in this country. I think that goes without saying, and I think that Republicans, who are honest, talk about that on a regular basis. Um, but I think, again, when you look at some of the kind of more pernicious statements that I think people have criticized the president with across the board, I think this type of latch-on um, type of behavior makes it very difficult, again, for us to actually get at the real issue of why we still have systemic inequalities in America to this day. Antoine, same question to you. What did you think when you saw that tweet from the president, and what's your take on the response you're seeing from Democrats? So several things. This is about a constitutional process that the Congress is going through, so we can't lose sight of that part. When I saw the president tweets, for me, it was just more of the same, but I refuse to go numb to it. We saw the president, and we've seen his body of work and his history of making these type of comments to distract the American people from the issues at hand. But for me, and I shared this with you before, Elaine, as the grandson of sharecroppers from South Carolina, when I hear words like this, it reminds reminds me of the stories I heard growing up uh, from my grandmothers who are no longer with me. Uh, and when we think about what lynchings were, uh, they were simply used to enforce so white supremacy and intimidate blacks through racial terrorism because they violated Jim Crow etiquette or because they went engaged in economic competition with whites. That has nothing to do with the impeachment process that the Congress is going through because this president and this administration is corrupt. And somehow or another, he does these things to distract the American people and also to generate a response from people who support him. I'm thoroughly disappointed in Lindsey Graham, who is from South Carolina, who understands the gravity that these words carry with them, who to go out and repeat these things as if they are okay because they're not. I just want to note, too, the definition of lynch, according to Merriam-Webster, to put to death as by hanging, by mob action, without legal approval or permission. That is the definition of the word lynch. And, and, and Elaine, there were thousands of these that happened at a dark place in our history, but they primarily happened to people who look like me. And when you think about what the president has said, go back to where you come from, rapists and thugs, and we all know the things he said over the course of his presidency, this just another ice in the cup of, of racism that Donald Trump carries around. 
Um, Joseph, let me ask you about the impeachment inquiry, because the president has uh, talked about Republicans needing to, quote, get tougher when it comes to the impeachment inquiry. Is the rhetoric here part of the president's strategy? Well, look, I, I think for better and for worse, I think the president is often his best um, political strategist. Um, I think often, though, when it comes to impeachment, he is his own worst enemy. Um, I think that there has been this attitude in the White House that somehow that if they actually convened the war room, that it would be a sign of weakness. Um, I think that most people would suggest to the president, to the administration, that it would be a sign that you're actually taking it seriously. And I think that I don't care whether you're an honest man, whether you're a person who thinks that you're being wrongly convicted, no person, innocent or not, walks into a courtroom without an attorney present. And no person in the court of public opinion, when we start talking about the political process that is impeachment, should be going about it basically, you know, not having all the all their facilities uh, afforded to them. So I think, you know, when you have this issue with Mulvaney now hanging kind of in the lurch because of the uncertainty, when you have questions like the what, what's before the president right now, many of those issues stem from the fact that they have not brought people in to deal specifically um, with impeachment and the nature of the attacks and the questions that are going to be asked uh, are attached to it. We'll see if the strategy hey, Elaine, evolves. Yeah, e go ahead, Elaine, Anton. Elaine, can I make one point? Yep. We also know that he did this because he knew what was happening today on Capitol Hill. Bill Taylor testified and basically told the committee that he was told the release of military aid was contingent on public declaration from Ukraine. It would investigate Joe Biden. And so when the president tweeted this this morning, and now we later know what the, what happened on Capitol Hill with a testimony today, we knew that this was ultimately going to be somehow, in some way, shape, or form, be a distraction, and now the proof is in the pudding. Uh, Antoine, I want to ask you from your perspective as a Democratic strategist, you're going to have President Trump, uh, as well as several Democratic presidential candidates, scheduled to speak at this Justice Forum at Benedict College and HBCU later this week. What is the message you think that needs to be delivered there? Well, for the president, I think he is going to have to explain lynching at a historical black college in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, the comments that he made via Twitter. Uh, he's also going to have to uh, talk about uh, what he's done for African-American uh, people and voters. Now, the traditional pivot is unemployment is low, but we know that's just a talking point that's typically not true when you peel back the onion a bit. Uh, and for Democratic candidates, I don't think they need to lose focus and lose sight of of being able to talk about what this president has meant for communities of color and for African-American millennials who attend colleges like Benedict College. But the forum is a criminal justice forum. And I think we also have to highlight that the justice system is broken and President Trump has not done much to help the justice system other than sign a bill that was delivered by the Congress and take credit for it. Uh, I want to give Joseph uh, the opportunity to respond there. What do you think that the president needs to say? And how how do you think this tweet in particular might affect the dynamic when the president appears later uh, this look, week? I, I think the hard truth is that individuals who believe that the president was hostile to communities of color, who believe that he did not understand the, the nuance of race in America, they came to that conclusion a long time ago, many before he was elected and certainly after Charlottesville. Um, and so I think, again, when it comes to the president and his message, to the extent that he is going to be able to convince portions of communities of color that he does take their needs seriously, I think it's going to be a lot about him talking about the First Step Act, the fact that there are individuals who are trying to prevent him from taking the second step, that we have community people, communities of color which have been empowered by this, millions of thousands of people and possibly even more so who are going to have the opportunity to be restored, uh, restorative justice. I think those are things that the president is going to end up talking about because I don't think trying to convince people he is not what Democrats say he is going to be an effective strategy. All right, Antoine Seawright and Joseph Pinion, thank you both. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you.